Okay. Okay. That's better. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> can break through walls, they just can't. That's fine. Gotta get this. <laughs> Green Starfighter, you have been recruited by the Star League to defend the frontier against Sur and the Kodan Armada. Yeah, yeah. Get ready for everlasting. Honey! I live there. I bought a house there. I'm gonna take you there! To boldly go where no man, no one has gone before. And remember, have fun with it! Hello everybody, and welcome to Project Shadow, episode number 572. So, Finn and Poe are a thing? Hi, I'm Charlie. You might remember me as Eric if you listen to the old podcast for personal reasons, and for myself, I decided to go by my first name. Yeah, long story. You can see over the blog if you really want to know, like, the whole thing about that. Anyway, it's been a while since I've done one of these, and I want to apologize. I've been sick for a while. You might hear me sniffling. You might hear me sound a little nasal. I kept wanting to wait until everything was better, and of course, you know, it's one of those things. One thing leads to another. I had a really bad sinus thing, and then I got a cold, and then allergies have come in to intervene, and, you know... I just realized today that, you know, there's never going to be an ideal sinus day. So hopefully I don't sound too bad and we can go ahead and have a conversation together and get this going. (laughs) You know, it's just been one of those weird things where my head and I have just been fighting. We've just been at war. You know, I don't feel bad anymore, but I'm still sneezing randomly in weirdness, you know. But, so don't worry about it. Hopefully I don't sound too bad, and yeah. Okay, so the last time we talked with you, I had Brian on the show, and we had a long discussion about Star Wars The Force Awakens, which was a good movie. And we talked then, and I've talked on the blog and on the podcast, well, not on the podcast, but on the blog, a lot about Finn and Poe. If you've been following, especially my Twitter or my, uh, tumblr accounts you will the project shadow tumblr account you will notice that i've got a kind of a theory that a lot of other people have that finn and poe are a thing and i want this to happen because that's one of the things that we came out of the movie with was this idea that they were closer than friends that they had a very instant chemistry and what have you today We have an article over at The Advocate that says, well, maybe they are more than friends. And, of course, this is still a maybe. We're not going to know until we see episode eight. I want to see this happen, but I don't know. So, you know, the big thing was Boyega. Well, Oscar Isaac has been like, yeah, yeah, they're a thing. You know, he went on Ellen and said, yeah, they're a thing. When I was doing my scenes, I was thinking, hey, they're a thing. I was thinking about romance the entire time we were filming and da 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 You know, at least, you know, to quote him, you know, at least I was playing romance in the cockpit. I was playing, there was a deep romance there. So, at least in Oscar Isaac's mind, they were a thing. John Boyega, on the other hand, has been very, very clear that no, that's all in Oscar Isaac's mind. It doesn't know where he's coming up with that. Well, filming has started on Star Wars Episode 8, and Anthony uh, and uh, Boyega, John Boyega, has kind of changed his mind, maybe. He's at least changed the way he's talking about this. And he has said that it's possible, okay? They might not be, basically what he has said is, they might not be in the friend zone after all. To read the actual quote to you, what's so funny, I posted a video the other day of of myself working out, skipping, and in the background, Oscar is just like, yeah baby, go on, and people just went crazy. But as far as I'm concerned, when JJ sat us down to go through the script, it was a bromance. But now I'm learning that Mark Hamill said before when he didn't know that Darth Vader was Luke's father, 
you never know what they're going to pull. Okay. So that's the quote. That's what we have to go on. That's what's causing people to go crazy. I don't know if that's enough to go crazy. It might be. Maybe. The one thing that I can say is that's more than we had before. I mean, this is John Boyega at least admitting there is a hint of a wisp of a possibility there. I think one of the more interesting statements in this whole thing is one from Mark Hamill. Mark Hamill, when talking about his character's sexuality, quote, is whatever the audience wants it to be. And I find that even more interesting. Like, Luke Skywalker could be gay? Hadn't really thought about that. Could Luke Skywalker be gay? That would be a very interesting turn of events. Could he be fluid? Could he be bisexual? Could he be whatever? That's an interesting question. That is an interesting question. Maybe. I think that would be a very interesting turn of events if we actually get to that in, you know, for, for okay, for me, what this boils down to is what do they put in the movies? Because I'm a huge Star Wars fan. I'm watching Rebels. I'm reading the books. I'm really into Star Wars. And so for me, when I think of Star Wars, okay, if we were to learn in the comics if we were to learn in the books that one of these characters was gay that's great that's wonderful that really helps the cause that expands the diversity of the star wars universe love it got it okay now what this actually breaks down to though is if it doesn't make it into the movie right like if the movies leave it ambiguous but say a comic makes it more overt or one of the books makes it more overt. Did it really happen? And I really mean that because, you know, Star Trek has already done this to us. You know, Star the first out gay character in Star Trek was a character that appeared in first contact. We had no idea in Star Trek first contact that he had any kind of sexuality. It was not played out at all in the show because it had no, Absolutely no bearing on the story, which kind of follows my rule, right? Like, I don't want a character to just be gay for gay's sake. But they outed him in a novel that came out after the movie. Now, as a Star Trek fan, I read that book. It, was a, it wasn't a bad book, but it wasn't a great book. It's not a book that I would put high on my recommend list. You know what I'm saying? Like, there are some Star Wars books, especially of the new set that have come out that I would highly recommend people read. Like, if you're not reading the Darth Vader comics, I think the other comics are, they're okay. But the, the Darth Vader comics have been really good. And if you're not reading the Darth Vader comics, you should be reading the Darth Vader comics. But beyond that, you know, not a lot of people get into the, and I'm going to use the term expanded universe here for anything that's not in the movies. A lot of people don't get into that. And while we're in a different situation here now, where the, if you will, expanded universe is canon now, right? Where the new books, the new comics, the TV shows and all that, they are canon now, which is not where we were before. So that's exciting. So if it did happen in a comic or in a book or, you know, what have you, yes, that makes it canon. We already have an outgate character in Star Wars. Um... They introduced him in Star Wars Aftermath, which is a book that has been disliked to a point that I do not understand. There's kind of a rational, almost uh, prequel-esque relationship that people have with this book. They say things that, you know, I read it, I liked it, I enjoyed it. I have no idea where a lot of the vitriol <laughs> that is surrounding the book comes from. You just have to say that because it really, it really confused me. A lot of people, I think, took a lot of their frustration about other things, Star Wars, out 
on this book, and that's unfortunate because it was an interesting book. It wasn't exactly what I was expecting because, you know, personally, like I think everybody else who read it, we wanted and hoped for a new, you know, characters that we knew, <laughs> you know, that this would be, well, what was Han, like Leia and Luke up to during this period of time? And that's not what it was. So, yeah, I, 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 I get that, you know, I, I, uh, you know, I, I, I understand the frustration that comes in there because yes, I wanted more than I got, but the cast of characters that were included, the story, I, I don't know. I think people, sorry for the sniffling there. I think the people there, you know, really just went off the rails on the crazy factor in this book and, you know, didn't take it for what it was, you know, it was the first book that they were giving us to explain who, what, and where happened after, you know, what happened after the Battle of Yavin, and that is not a, not, not the Battle of Yavin, the Battle of Endor, and that's what we got. You know, that is what the book was. So, for better or for worse, you know, you can make that, you know, make make your own. <sighs> personal feelings known about that you know maybe yes they could have given us more characters that we knew and less characters that we didn't know but you know the the amount of hatred that came out over this book i mean it it's one of those characters it's one of those books that almost completely turned me off to the Star Wars fandom because it just uh, it, it it the reaction was so illogical and so upsetting and it could have uh, I I I don't know how to phrase it otherwise I mean it just it just it really upset me how people reacted to the book. Um, I know I kind of got side, sidetracked there. I have talked about that in many other places. Um, so I, I should probably just let it go here. But, you know, it, it was a good book. If you haven't read it, I recommend that you read it. Chuck Wendig, I think, did a good job with it. So at any rate... You know, we, we already have had two out gay characters appear in the new Star Wars canon. In The Lords of the Sith, which was a very good book. If you haven't read it, you should definitely read it. If you watch this week's um, Rebels and you want to know more about what was going on on Ryloth, you should definitely read this book. But we're introduced in that book to um, Moff Dillian Moores. And she is quite openly a lesbian character. She is a villain in the story. And so we have her there in aftermath. We have, um, Singer, you know, Sing Singer Rath Vallis, who is a former Imperial who becomes one of the heroes of the story. He is one of the main characters of the story and he is gay. There is, I think a half awkward scene where Singer is outed in the story and it goes to what I've said many, many times about how it is important how you include the gay characters in your story, where basically there is a kind of a contrived scene where one of the other characters comes on to him and he's just like, no, I'm not into ladies. It's not you, just I'm not into ladies. And comes out then that may, could have been handled better. I think there are other ways to do that. I think they did that better with the new Moth 
that they, you know, the Moth of Ryloth, I think they did a better job with her. But, you know, we already have out gay characters in here, but I don't know how many people know that because, again, I don't know how many people are actually reading the books. And so if they are going to do this, if they are going to take a stand, I guess I'm in this weird place where I am concerned we're going to get Korasami'd. And don't get me wrong, I love Korsami. I ship them all day long. But, you know, Nickelodeon was not keen on the idea, so they just kind of... It's something that organically grew out, where other people started noticing it, the authors started noticing it too, and then at the very end, we get this moment, this intense, beautiful moment, of them staring into each other's eyes while they go off to have their adventures in the spirit world. And it was a beautiful, it was a wonderful moment, but if we are technical about it, their relationship is implied throughout the story, whereas the heterosexual relationships that occurred are not. I mean, they're not overly sexualized because that show was, as many of these things are, primarily for kids, but you knew who was dating who, and you knew when they were dating, you knew when they were having problems, you knew when they were breaking up. They they were overt relationships, and that's not what I want here. That might be what we get here from what I'm reading, like this little bit that I'm reading here and what other character, you know, what the actors have said so far, I feel like that that's the best we can hope for here. Unless they actually are brave enough. Like I do not expect to see John Boyega and Oscar Isaac's kiss. That's not going to happen. That, that I, I hope to be proven wrong that's one of the reasons why I'm kind of calling it here, you know, <laughs> prove me wrong. Have John Boyega and Oscar Isaac's kiss in one of the movies. Give me that Han Solo Princess Leia moment in one of these movies, be it in episode eight or episode nine, and then you've made it official. But if it's just them looking at each other and just this kind of subtle conversational thing that's happening in the background, then did it really happen? <laughs> I know I get really picky about this stuff, but you know, as a gay writer, as somebody who is, you know, in January, I finally got to marry my husband of 19 years on our 19th wedding anniversary. We finally got legally married. Stuff like this matters to me, you know, stuff like this matters to me a lot. You know, I want it to be a real relationship. I want it to be something that little gay boys and little gay girls, as they're growing up, and queer kids of any stripe. Like, I don't care if they're bisexual, and I haven't heard a lot of people talk about that yet. Like, I would be fine if they wanted to Captain Jack Poe Dameron. And I've been saying that a lot online, that I feel like that's the way they're going to go with this, is that Poe Dameron is probably going to be bisexual and the way they're going to play up any relationship between him and um, Finn is kind of that Captain Jack Yanto thing where Yanto was ostensibly a straight character. He says many, many times, like when he's talking to his sister, for example, in one episode, his sister says, you know, I didn't know you were gay. I wish you could have told me. And he says, I'm not. It's just him. You know, he was Jack sexual, <laughs> you know, and I think that they may go that route with it if they go any way at all. Again, I'm, I'm saying this just because the universe has a wonderful way of trying to prove me wrong, and I want it to. I really want it to. But so far in the grand history of LGBT characters in sci-fi, you know, the best examples are on shows that unfortunately a lot of people didn't watch. I mean, Ming-Na's character on Stargate Universe was one of the best representations of an LGBT character in sci-fi. And for a lot of reasons that we're not going to get into, that show, you know, didn't make it that far, which is sad because I think it was a decent show. But, you know, <laughs> you know that, that's probably the best that we've gotten so far because her relationships seemed real. The character seemed like, somebody that I know, you know what I'm saying? She, she seemed to be a real person, not just a character that had a sexuality applied to her, you know? And of course I'm ruling out Captain Jack, you know, and anything that ever happened on Torchwood because Tor Torchwood 
is a magical special holy fairy land that you know wonderful things happened there and then it went into you know the ether we don't know what's gonna happen with it though you know john Berman keeps saying he wants to do more so we'll see and of course yes i'm i'm also discounting willow because <laughs> everybody knew that that relationship was doomed from the start and because of the cliched nature of it where we finally have a character come out we have a committing committed loving relationship that ends up going sour and of course the lesbian love partner dies and that that is typical of the way these kinds of relationships go and that i bring that up just because i don't want to see that happen here you know i don't want to see that happen in star wars right that that to me in some ways would be worse than them saying no nope, we're not going to do that they're both straight here's their love interest huzzah you know i think the worst thing would be for them to commit to okay finn and poe are an item and then immediately or shortly thereafter kill off finn or poe because that is such a cliched way to treat an out gay character in sci-fi that and you know the the problem with that is once i start thinking about that it's going to be john boyega's character because let's face it the lifespan of an african-american actor on a sci-fi series has never been very good you know to the point where it's kind of a running in joke that you know the black guy is going to die first and it shouldn't be but if they make this happen and they kill off john boyega's character finn well, then they gave into a stereotype. They gave into a story that just didn't need to be told. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, they went cliche, and I don't want to see that happen too. I want to see them do something interesting. I want them to do something novel, and hopefully they will. So, I can't believe I've talked for 22 minutes about this. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Um. so what's been going on? One, if you are a fan of the show and you want to contribute like we used to back in the old days, I have set up a new website over at fandomtoday.com. You can also find that at medium.com slash fandomtoday, but I think fandomtoday.com is easier to remember. Fandom Today is going to be a place where I'm going to try my darndest to post my own fandom stuff over there and really kind of bring back that kind of you know, community site for us. One of the things that I love about Medium is it's very, very easy for you guys to submit over there. So all you have to have is a Twitter account. You sign into Medium using your Twitter account and you will be able to submit stories to the Phantom Today public um, publication over there. The reason it's a submit and not a post, it's not a post directly is I want to reduce the amount of spam that gets through, you know, like to zero. So I will be reading them. Like once I get to know you and know the kind of stuff that you're doing, we can whitelist people. So you guys know who you are, who have been very active in the community sharing and stuff. If you want to start sharing over there, let me know. And I will whitelist you right away because I know you and I know you're going to be doing quality stuff over there. So, you know, just head over there. Let me know what you think. Um, I have an article up over there right now on who I think the Knights of Ren are. And I'll probably do a podcast episode on that maybe this week, um, depending on what else happens. I think that'd be an interesting topic to discuss. But I'm trying not to make this podcast all Star Wars all the time, but that's kind of hard sometimes. So, you know, I'm going to try to bring other stuff in here. You know how we do. Um, I would also like to bring up at the um that i'm going to be posting a lot of stuff over there so if you like my fiction definitely follow me over at medium on ce C. dorset over there um medium.com slash ce dorset will take you right to me you can follow me and you can see anything that i post if you follow me you can see anything that i post anywhere on the site if you follow a particular publication then you just get the stories that are pu published there so you can see what publications that i um submit to over there I'm going to be writing a lot of short fiction and a lot of that's going to be going up over there too. So if you are 
interested in that, definitely go over there and check that out because I'm really excited about some of the stuff that's happening and some of the stuff that we're doing over there. I'm going to be doing this podcast regularly again. Um, I do apologize for my nose. Hopefully that will be taken care of shortly, but you know, life's life. Um, I also would like to ask if you have the time and you love the work that we've done over the last couple of years and you would really like to see more of it come your way. I do have a Patreon set up over at patreon.com slash CE Dorset. And, um, I'm going to be changing the, um, offers over there soon. We're trying to figure out what would be a good series, you know, a good set of things that we can offer for you guys. I will say that at least right now, anybody who donates over at our Patreon page, we will definitely do a shout out for you on the podcast because that would really help us out a lot. Um, this is a monthly Patreon, unlike a lot of what people do over on patreon.com. So instead of giving us so much per episode or something like that, like a lot of places do, um, I'm asking for whatever you can do. If you can do a dollar and smaller gifts are encouraged. Like if you can give more like, and you want to, please feel free to do that. But this is one of the ways I'm wanting to try to start setting my budget. I want to get away from selling things because I think that this really corrupted a lot of the work that I've been doing. And it's one of the things that has made both doing this podcast and doing my fiction really hard over the last couple of years is I got into this place where I was thinking about, you know, the, the monetization of things and that got in the way. And I don't want to be thinking about that. I want to be responsible directly to you guys. So the way this is going to work is for whatever you can give over there, we'll set up some levels. You can see what's there now. Um, and you know, These are going to be modified in the not too distant future, but you know, anything you can do to help, you know, would be greatly appreciated. Um, greatly appreciated. I'm trying, you know, I want to make all my fiction free. I want to make this podcast and keep this podcast going. You guys have been asking for other stuff from me. I'm going to try to do that too. But the idea is if you can start donating over there, and helping me to focus less on some of my other business activities and be able to focus exclusively on you guys and what you guys want, that would be greatly appreciated. So if you have a couple extra dollars a month to spare, please head over to patreon.com slash CE Dorset and donate. And, you know, like I said, right now, all of the offers that are up there will be honored. Um, But definitely the one thing I can say is for whatever level you donate at, we'll definitely do a shout out for you on this podcast. Just keep the shout out um, family friendly because we like to keep our, you know, (laughs) I I try not to cuss on this podcast, but, you know, it would be greatly appreciated. I would really love it if you could help, help me out and, you know, help me figure out, you know, what you guys want from me. You know, we're looking at doing a lot of things. You can see I've set up a goal over there at creating a professional um, audiobook, audiobooks of my back catalog. I set a goal at raising, if I can raise 125 a month over there, that will give me enough to hire somebody to do the voice recording and do all that. Um, that way, all of the old books will be audiobooks, and I will be able to kind of keep that person or those people on staff so that as new fiction is coming out, we'll be able to do audio of that as well. So that's kind of where we're at right now. And I feel really weird asking you guys for money, (laughs) but I, I feel weirder asking you guys to buy things because I love writing. I love blogging. I love doing these podcasts and I really don't like, You know, it's one of the reasons why we got rid of advertising on the sites because I felt really skeezy going through and I would look at the ads sometimes and be like, I don't like this and then have to go through and try to block them. And I, I don't know. I just felt really skeezy about it. And so if you find what we're doing, you know, helpful at all, and you want to be a part of what we're doing, definitely head over to patreon.com slash the and 
show some love. <laughs> you know, I I will be doing this at the end of all of the podcasts, kind of kind of this little, you know, I, I think of it in my head as the PBS moment. It won't al always be this long. And, you know, once we get this figured out more, then, you know, everything will be golden. But I love you guys. You guys have been so helpful and so supportive. You have no idea. <laughs> you, know, you have no idea how much you guys help get me through everything that has been going on. You guys mean the world to me. And I just I have to end this episode by saying thank you. And I will talk to you all tomorrow. Bye. Have the fun. <laughs>